Welcome back to Sim Project, everybody. Uh, my latest, well, I wouldn't call it my creation. Found this on Thingiverse. It is the Garmin GTC 580 uh, touch panel interface. Found in um, uh, the Vision Jet, uh, the TBM 960 series, I believe. And uh, also would be in the real world. It's in the, the new uh, Cirrus uh, SR22 G7. Uh, and uh, a couple of the uh, the Cessna Latitude uh, corporate jets use it. But yeah, found it on Thingiverse. So uh, I'll give you a little look at it and uh, then I'll uh, show the operation of it. So this is the unit. It's all 3D printed. It's got a five and a half inch wave share touch screen monitor in it. There's the Arduino up there. Only using about 12 inputs on it, I believe. So lots of room for expansion if you wanted to put multiple units together. And then uh, circuit board on the end. Now I custom built my own circuit board because I was only building one of these. But then uh, I'll pull the background screen up here. Uh, the creator on Thingiverse, he, uh, he created a whole file and everything. If you want to uh, you want to build two or three of these maybe, you can uh, actually have the printed circuit boards made through any, you know, any company that makes circuit boards like that. They, uh, he's got all the CAD files and everything included. So you can do the circuit board, you can do the mounting board for the Arduino as well as you want. And then he's got a nice simple little ribbon cable that connects the two together like that. So yeah, um, it was really, uh, really easy to build for the most part. You know, it's only got uh, four main pieces. Well, three main pieces plus uh, a bunch of little knobs and stuff. Now I used my resin printer to print all these. So they've, uh, they've turned out a little better and a little white silicone smeared into the line there to give uh, the white line effect. Now, uh, I did have to uh, put a little shim in behind the one knob there, as uh, when you resin print these, the tolerance is, uh, they're much, much more accurate, and when most people uh, make a 3D print file, they, uh, they tend to give a little more extra space there just because the way different 3D printers will print it. And when you go to a resin printer, though, it's, it's such a much more accurate system that, uh, yeah, you've got to put a little spacer in behind that or just go into the CAD file and edit that and make it a, a little smaller so it fits better. But that's the unit. Um, pretty easy to set up as far as Windows goes. Uh, you'll see here in a minute once we get it going. The cables I have, they kind of go in all different angles. I will say when... Uh, Windows first saw the, the uh, screen. It of course saw it in a uh, portrait mode. I recommend calibrating your touch screen and everything in that default position. Um, when you go into Windows, Windows will actually, when it brings the calibrator up, it'll take it to a native orientation. Whatever that orientation is, I recommend go do that uh, and then calibrate in Windows and then go on and do the uh, setup beyond that and change it to uh, you know landscape mode it just seemed it, it worked a lot better for me the other thing with this wave share monitor and you can't see it back underneath here there is uh, an actual button to push to flip the touch orientation I did have to do that to uh, make it work but yeah that's the unit like you say um, pull up the uh, the main body of it here to print uh, it was like 18 hours to print this because of course the biggest thing you can see it's got all the end fill on the back or not the end fill sorry the support on the back to support it um, I looked at flipping it over doing it the other way but it still created a mass amount of support on the front which would have uh, taken away from the quality of the print so you do get this big support on the back because of course it's got some standoffs back here where you put a uh, some brass fittings in to give you a uh, little threaded inserts and stuff so you can screw everything together. So let's put it on the computer and uh, fire it up. I'll show you how it works. Okay, so first thing I got to do is order some uh, cables because as you can see, none of the angles work on any of this. So, but that's uh, that's for after we get a console built for everything. So it's all set up. I've already set this up in pop out panel manager. So we'll just go ahead and flip the power on. And we're sitting here in the Vision Jet in Catalina Island. As you can see, all the side buttons do what they're supposed to do. Uh, let's get the uh, APU power up, if I can remember where it is. Nope, not there. But as you can see, touchscreen's really nice. 
I did have to play with the settings in pop-up panel manager and Windows because I was getting some delay or the buttons weren't working right. And I'll uh, I'll throw a couple screenshots up of what that was adjustment. But yeah, so we're at Catalina Island. So that's uh, Kilo Alpha Victor X-Ray. We'll put that in there. We'll select our runway we're going to depart from. It looks like runway 22 is what I've got selected. We're going to put our destination in. We're going over to San Diego. So that's... Kilo Sierra Alpha November. You see San Diego pops up there. We hit the enter on that one. And you can see our map is starting to appear on the, uh, well, the G1500. In reality, that's G3000s, but nobody's come up with a good G3000 yet to, uh, to print. So yeah, so we're going to do that. And then we can just pick our, uh, there is no departure. So we'll do our arrival. Like I said, we're going in runway 27. So we'll pick that. And Comics 2 is what Navigraph is telling us. With the uh, Sierra X-Ray Charlie, which is where we are, is the transition for runway 27. And we'll load that up as well. And there we go. There's our map. We can go full screen on that. And we can, uh, whoops, zoom in the wrong way there. I'm going to speed the uh, adjustment up for that Moby Flight. It's a little slow. But yeah, there it comes down. And we can actually, now we can do that. And we can uh, we can use the touchscreen options. Whoops, looks like that's working upside down. And we can uh, actually move around on our map. And zoom in. Well, it might not work perfect for that, but everything else functions really nice. We go in, we can do our radios. Um, so I've already put the uh, Unicom for VATSIM in, but we can put our transponder code in. That picks up. Uh, that's a little small. But yeah, that is the unit up and running. So that is the GTC 5880. Yeah, um, one thing I didn't show uh, in the earlier part of the video, the creator did, and uh, I'll just show you a quick shot of the screen here. As part of the 3D print package, he does supply a little stand with it, and in the, the bottom of the stand, uh, and there is one on, on Thingiverse here that will fit in there, supposedly I've started printing it, but I'm gonna do a console make mine a little different um but you can put the gtu 500 i believe is is the garmin number uh that's the autopilot it's the autopilot that's in the uh, uh i think it's in the tbm by default in microsoft flight simulator uh it's used in the vision jet and in the real world it, it's in the uh the cirrus and the sr22 uh, g7 of course but that nice autopilot there's a real nice one available for free here on thingiverse and uh the the creator of the 580 he went ahead and did the box with that insert ready to accept the uh the 500 uh, autopilot so yeah um so yeah i didn't print the box the box did it was almost a day-long print because of course it is far bigger and it's got room uh, for the autopilot and all that stuff so i uh, would really only print that if you wanted to and uh, i think if you uh, you look at the files he's got two you can actually make it a double wide box as well in case you wanted to put two units side by side with the autopilot below and uh, all the Moby Flight files are included with the download package on Thingiverse. So I will link that in the description below. Uh, I hope you found it informative. Um, I haven't had a chance to use it a whole lot because like I said, um, I got to put something to mount it in because and get some cables on order from Amazon to neaten up the install. So uh, it's in a position where I can get at it. But yeah, anyways, hope you appreciated the video. If you did, please give it a like and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.